Okay, so good morning everybody. My name is Philip Creighton, a Sheep Enterprise Leader and Grassland Systems Researcher here in Chagas Athenry. And you're very welcome to our Chagas Sheep Open Day here this morning. So it's the first stop here uh, with myself and Fiona, we're going to be looking at uh, sustainable sheep systems. And I suppose you might say, what does sustainable sheep systems mean? I suppose really what we're talking about is, you know, how we can manage our farms to get the most from them from a number of different angles. And I suppose the first one is number one, I suppose is, 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 is to have the system as sustainable as possible from the animal's point of view. Um, and so, you know, we're producing lamb. So to, 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 to have a system there that lambs will perform well and we can get them away from the slaughter quite quickly. Second one is, the, is our environmental impact. So obviously trying to minimize our environmental impact of our farming systems. And the third one then, I suppose, is what it can do for us in terms of the economic impacts, okay? So over the last number of years, you would, have been, you would have heard me talking a lot about lambs per yo and stocking rates, so the trials that would have went on before the current one, um, where we're looking at stocking rate and polyphacy. And they've been highlighted through the profit monitors and the National Farm Survey as being very important indicators of farm profitability. So that will be hitting the economic, uh, the economic um, aspect of our sustainability. But then we also have to consider then, you know, in terms of producing that lamb from, from a grass-based system, from a forage based system to minimize again our economic costs but also you know trying to reduce our environmental footprint of that and Fiona's going to cover that in a minute and then I suppose part of that then part of that story is you know traditionally I suppose with our last trial there we were trying to push the boundaries in terms of stocking rate and in terms of lambs per yo to get as much as much lamb output as possible from grass but we were driving that mainly from you know chemical nitrogen inputs relatively high chemical nitrogen inputs to make that grass grow and to, to, to achieve the high levels of utilization that were required so that 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 stock and rate prolificity trial finished back in in, in 2017 and we transitioned the farm then here into a more clover based system or a, a clover based comparison study where we were trying to still maintain the same levels of output um, so that we could have still have a viable income coming into the farm but to significantly reduce our nitrogen inputs by substituting it with clovers and um, legumes that will fix nitrogen so that trial then was basically looking at a perennial ryegrass uh, sward on its own versus a perennial ryegrass white clover sward and some of the, the key points that we've seen I suppose is again touching on the main points that I highlighted at the start from an animal performance point of view the lambs grazing the, 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 the perennial ryegrass plus white clover swords were performing 10 to 15 grams a day better in terms of their average daily gain and this is mainly in the post waning period and that led then to a reduction in days to slaughter of a minimum of, of about 10 days and depending on the stocking rate that they were at it could be up to 14 days quicker to slaughter which again is, is, is a positive both from an economic point of view from a carbon footprint point of view and even from a management point of view from ourselves in terms of reducing the workload the big one I suppose is that by putting the clover into the swords we were able to reduce our chemical nitrogen inputs by about 40% okay but we remain the same level of uh, grass production across the perennial ryegrass treatments with, with the high levels of nitrogen inputs and the, the, the perennial ryegrass grass clover swords with the low level of, 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 of nitrogen. So we reduced our nitrogen inputs by 40%, but we grew the same amount of grass. So again, the important one here, the forage utilized, the forage grown and utilized, we were still able to maintain a high level of output, um, which ultimately then meant that we were still able to match the financial incomes of those higher um, output systems driven by high levels of nitrogen by substituting that nitrogen uh, for clover okay so that led to a uh, an increase in the net margin per hectare of 100 euros per hectare and I should highlight that that was at nitrogen prices of we'll say 380 a ton for urea or protected urea we all know the story in terms of where that has gone since so this will actually be an even bigger figure but the, the the results up to the end of 2021 before the current increases that's what the benefits were okay so that's a quick highlight I suppose of what we mean in terms of the basics of, of our systems and um, what we are doing here in Atten Rye to try and improve these uh, indicators here and taking these uh, traditional indicators into account so I'm going to hand you over to Fiona now who's going to go into a little bit more detail about some of the things that I've already mentioned okay thank you 
Good morning, so as Philip said, my name is Fiona McGovern and I'm a researcher based here at Chagas Athenry. So to follow on from what Philip has spoken about, I'm going to discuss with you some of the pillars of sustainability um, and we'll go into some more detail on the environmental aspect of that. So just to say, I suppose, a lot of us always forget the social element of sustainability and as farmers we're notorious for you know working all hours of the day on the farm or off farm and joining both things together but we do have to take into account our own time as well and try and maintain a work-life balance your business is only as important as you as you are the driver of your business so you need to take care of yourself as well to move on to that, so we're all fairly familiar with climate change and we're hearing about the targets that are coming down the road at us. But to give a bit of context, what is it? So agricultural greenhouse gas emissions in Ireland are contributing 37% of the overall national greenhouse gas emissions. Methane production accounts for 57% of this. So the blue section here on the map represents enteric fermentation, which is basically methane output from our ruminant animals, so cattle and sheep. And why is this important? So it has a global warming potential, and I suppose it is something that we'll all need to address going forward or try to make our systems as sustainable as possible, as Philip mentioned. And because of this, the Sheep Research Programme here in Athenry and the Chagas Signpost Programme have come together and identified 12 management factors which are going to be recommended farmers and most of you are probably doing some of them already um, in relation to improving your environmental sustainability and your economic output on your farm. So these management factors cover a range of topics including soil and grassland and animal and dietary factors. So just to go through some of the soil and grassland ones and Philip would have highlighted these. So it's about maintaining your soil fertility, targeting your index 3 P and Ks, spreading lime where necessary to get your ideal soil pH, using protected urea where possible and if you're spreading slurry to try and use a low emission slurry spreading method. To focus on some of the dietary or animal factors, so if you can improve your grassland management, you're maximising the amount of grazed grass in the diet of the animal and you're hopefully reducing any requirement for concentrate supplementation until it's necessary. The other thing that Philip mentioned was the focus that we've got now on clover within our systems. So clover will reduce your chemical nitrogen requirements, therefore that will improve the environmental sustainability of your system. But in addition to that, we've measured the methane output of animals here in Chagas Athenry grazing the grass clover swards. And we've seen that if you include white clover, red clover or plantain in your sward, those animals have on average a 12% reduction in methane output. So not only are you reducing your chemical nitrogen input, but you're also reducing the methane output of your animal. Similarly, and just to touch briefly on it, we've also looked at some data from the Sheep Ireland Central Progeny Test Flocks, where we're seeing if you use a five-star animal, so high genetic merit animals versus low genetic merit animals, you're weaning more lambs per yo, you're getting a higher net profit per yo, and you're also having a 7% reduction in greenhouse gas emissions on your farm. So it's a win-win in all situations. We also went back and looked at the data from Philip's prolificacy potential and stocking rate study and we can see that if you increase your prolificacy potential, so the number of lambs that you're weaning from each O on your farm, you have a chance to reduce your greenhouse gas emissions by 10%. So if you can increase lambs weaned from 1.5 to 1.8, you're reducing your greenhouse gas emissions by 10%. And you're also increasing your profitability by over 300 euro per hectare. So lastly for me, just some key take home messages. You matter just as much as your system and your animals, so you need to take care of yourself. Our research here from Chagas and Athenry is showing that if you increase efficiency, you increase profitability and you'll also improve the environmental carbon footprint of your farm. And there are 12 measures that you can take to help improve your environmental sustainability but also improve your economic output and we would encourage each of you today to learn more about these measures throughout the day and to take on one of these actions when you get home to your own farm. Thank you.